Are you studying Chinese and want to find a better way of learning? Do you want to avoid common problems and make sure you learn efficiently? Do you need inspiration on your road to fluency? Then hacking Chinese is for you. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. This is a special episode zero where I will introduce you to the podcast. As I record this, there are almost 150 episodes available, and if you're new to the podcast, there are a few things I want to say before we dive into how to learn Mandarin. First things first, the Hacking Chinese podcast is about learning Mandarin Chinese, but most of what I talk about is also relevant for other languages in general, and sometimes even beyond language learning entirely. The podcast is aimed at learners on all levels, from those of you who haven't even started learning yet, to those of you who have been doing so for a decade or longer. My quest is to find a better way of learning by understanding both how language learning works and how the Chinese language works. This is where the name hacking Chinese comes from, and if you're not familiar with this usage of hacking, it's related to computer hacking in the shared focus on resourcefulness, experimentation and optimization, but of course involves nothing illegal or bad. Language hacking is good for everyone and completely safe, even if it might occasionally bring you into conflict with conservative teachers. You might learn some Chinese by listening to the podcast, but the main goal here is to help you improve the way you learn, enabling you to get more out of the time you invest into learning Chinese. This is also why the podcast is in English and not in Chinese, as I would then only be able to target more advanced students. So who am I then? My name is Ole Linge, and I'm a Swedish guy who takes an interest in way too many things. Among them, I like learning languages, mostly Chinese, English and French, and I have a degree in teaching the former too. I started learning Chinese when I was 23 and have since learned it in many different contexts, including formal language courses at university in Sweden, intensive immersion courses abroad, online classes while being busy with other things such as studying and working, and most importantly, tons of self-studying. I've also studied for two years in a master's degree program for teaching Chinese as a second language in Taiwan, a program mostly aimed at native speakers and taught in Chinese. Beyond hacking Chinese, I work at university in Sweden, mostly with professional development for language teachers and teaching languages for specific purposes. I'm also involved in several other projects, including Scritter and Wordswing. I'll put links to these in the description of this episode, along with a link to my LinkedIn profile if you want to know more about what I do. If you're curious what I like doing when I don't learn or teach languages, I like writing all sorts of things, not just articles about learning Chinese. I like sports, mostly gymnastics, unicycling and long distance running. And I also love games, including role-playing games, board games, video games and Rubik's Cube. And I don't know if that's actually a game, but I like it anyway. If you want to know more about me, you can also head over to my personal website at olelinge.se. When it comes to how I learned Chinese and how I ended up where I am today, I have told that story in a series of articles and podcast episodes on Hacking Chinese. So simply search for How I Learn Chinese in your podcast app or on hackingchinese.com and you'll find this series. This is a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the relationship between the podcast and the website. I launched Hacking Chinese in 2010 and I've published almost 500 articles about learning Chinese since then. And I launched a podcast because I myself love listening to things, which enables me to do other things while I'm learning about something interesting. I also hope that the podcast is able to reach a different audience than the website does. Some topics, such as pronunciation, are also easier to talk about than to write about. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is also true, however, so it's sometimes hard to talk about things like Chinese characters here on the podcast. Fortunately, all the episodes have a corresponding article on Hacking Chinese that I always link to. Since you're listening to this, you have found some way of tuning into the podcast already, but it's good to know that apart from embedding the episodes in articles on Hacking Chinese, the podcast is also available on most podcasting platforms and also on YouTube, so you can choose whichever channel you prefer and don't forget to like, review, subscribe, etc. to please our algorithm overlord. 
Still, if you're looking for a specific episode, or just want a convenient list of all the episodes with links to the respective articles, you can go to podcast.hackingchinese.com. This is particularly useful if you want to listen to articles in a series and want to get an overview of that series, because each article of course contains a list of all the articles in that series so you can navigate it easily. While we're on the topic of listening order, I want to point out that there is no reason to listen to them in chronological order as they were published. You do not have to have listened to the earlier episodes to make sense of the later episodes. In fact, I think the best way to approach the podcast as a new listener is not to care about chronology at all and simply pick episodes you find interesting. If you want to listen in chronological order, I suggest you listen to the newest episodes first and then work your way backwards. I also want to mention that there are different types of episodes. So if you listen to anything after, say, episode 25 or so, they are mostly about me talking about a topic rather freely. I do have an article I've already written, but I don't have a script for the podcast and I don't read the article aloud. This results in what I hope are more natural sounding episodes, which many people find more engaging. For the first two dozen episodes or so, the audio was meant more as a companion to the written articles, so if you start with those, please note that later episodes are better. Then there are also some special episodes, such as interviews, which I also plan to do more of. There is also an episode where I experiment with having one version in English and another in Chinese. And then finally, I also run annual Q&A episodes where I collect the most interesting questions I've received throughout the year and try to answer them. If you have a question about learning Chinese, you should check out my 101 questions and answers about learning Chinese, and I'll make sure to put a link to that in the show notes. You can of course also reach out to me directly, which is a great segue into the final part of this episode. If you want to contact me, you can simply email me at editor at hackingchinese.com or you can ping me on social media, preferably Twitter, where I post as at Hacking Chinese. To stay up to date, you should subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already and sign up for my weekly newsletter where you get the most recent article directly in your inbox. If you like Hacking Chinese and find my articles and podcast episodes helpful, the best thing you can do is to help me spread the word and share my content. For the podcast specifically, don't forget to review and rate the show on your favorite platform. This only takes a few minutes, but it helps other people find out about the show. Should you need more structured and comprehensive guidance on your Chinese journey, you can also check out my courses at hackingchinese.com courses. I provide all articles and podcast episodes for free without ads, so if you want to support my effort to make Chinese easier to learn for all, please consider checking out my courses or supporting me directly on Patreon. That's it for this special zeroth episode of the podcast, and I hope I have given you a good idea of what Hacking Chinese is about, and also some useful information about how to approach the podcast as a new listener. If you have any feedback or questions, just let me know, but otherwise, I'll see you in whichever episode you choose to listen to next. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies.